Hello, I am J.S. Watts and this is the second video in my reading of the opening of my dark fiction novel, A Darker Moon. In video one, Abe, the narrator of the novel, has been considering his early childhood on what little he knows of his heritage. He's continuing to debate the issues of where he comes from. Yet another unknown aspect of my heritage is my faith. Am I Jewish? My mother had dark hair and eyes and abandoned me to synagogue. Little enough to go on, but it might indicate a Hebrew legacy, mightn't it? I too am dark-haired and dark-eyed, and my name is Old Testament kosher, though I am not circumcised. This gave the rabbi who found me, like a landlocked Latter-day Moses, something of a dilemma. Should he hand over full responsibility for me to the secular authorities or ensure that I was brought up as one of the chosen people? It would have been nice to have been chosen. My maybe mother looked as if she might have been Jewish, which should have counted for something. But there was no way of telling. I had been found on a Friday, just at sunset, so the rabbi kept me for the Sabbath and then handed me over, lock, stock and blankets, to social services as soon as possible the following Monday morning, and I do mean as soon as possible. One of my old social workers told me he was standing on the department steps, with me and the basket thrust down at his feet, well before anyone had arrived at the office to open up. From this inauspicious start in life, I entered the state care system as a doubly rejected child, of unknown parentage and indeterminate faith, with only a set of poor quality blankets, an anonymous photograph and a card from the disreputable Black Moon Club to my name. Chapter Two I have other memories, some quite vivid. Those I can place chronologically I have built into the story of my childhood. That will come later. But there are memories I cannot locate in time, cannot anchor to a there or then or anything that flows within the current of my story. Bastard! Got no mummy! Got no daddy! You're a bastard! Bar stud! I'm not! No mummy! No daddy! Bastard! Bastard! I've got a mummy! I've got a mummy! I have! I had! I have! Then there was the cat. She was little more than a kitten, really. Silky black fur, a white line down her nose, little white paws. And she was mine. She adopted me. She took tidbits from my fingers and purred when I came near. Then I heard him. Evie, Evie, come here, Evie. She won't come to you. Yes, she will. Evie, come here, Evie. She won't come to you. She's mine and she's not called Evie. She's not yours. She's not anybody's. And if I want to call her Evie, I can. Can't. Can. Can't. What do you call her? I don't. Then I can call her what I like. Evie, come here, Evie. And she came. To him. She took food from out of his hand. And she purred. I never fed her after that. If she came after me, I threw stones at her. Some hit her. She yowled. She never bothered me again. I can also remember books. Rows and rows of them. Stacks. A library. Old and dusty. Were they mine? No one else seemed interested in them, so they can't have been very valuable. I can't remember what was in them, what they were about. What was the value of them? Only what I remember. And finally, candles, rows and rows of them too, lighting the way down the steps, steep, made of stone, going all the way down into the blackness at the bottom, dark, moist, waiting. You dream of candles, you're weird. No, I'm not. Weird boy, weird boy. I'm not weird. It's only a dream everybody dreams. Weird boy, weirdy boy, beardy boy, bastard. Got no mummy, no no daddy, bastard, bastard. 
I'm not. I've got a mummy. I have. I have. I've seen her picture. She's mine.